Welcome everyone to part 13 of the sci-fi first person shooter tutorial series. We've made it to the final plan tutorial of the series. And I just want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who made it this far. Honestly, it really means a lot. In today's video, we're going to complete our set dressing for our project, basically just importing a free environment from the asset store, adding in some music, and placing our enemies where we want them to be. At the very end, we'll fix a few bugs that I noticed here and there in our project, and after that, we're done. So let's finish up this series. First, we'll want to start by importing a nice environment to place our enemies in. So we can open up the Epic Games Launcher, and just like in the second video of the series, we'll import a free asset. We can go to the Marketplace tab, and we'll go to the Permanently Free Collection. And right now, the pack that I want to import is on page 4, right here called Modular Sci-Fi Season 1 Starter Bundle. If you can't find it for some reason, because they do shuffle around sometimes, we can just go here, type in modular sci-fi. And there we go. So we're going to get the season one starter bundle. We can just click on it, scroll down to add to project. And normally this would work, but it looks like the asset hasn't been updated to support Unreal Engine 4.27. Now, I updated my project from 4.26 to 4.27 between episodes 6 and 7. So we're going to have to do a little bit of a workaround by forcing the Epic Games launcher to put the asset into our project anyways. To do that, we'll click on Add to Project. We'll want to select Show All Projects, and we can select the project that we want to add it to. Select the version to be 4.26, and with the sci-fi FPS still highlighted in the background, we can click add to project and this is a pretty big bundle so it's going to take a little while to download and add to the project luckily i think i downloaded it earlier today so it's only going to take a little bit and there we go so that method allowed us to import the asset even though we didn't have any of the supported engine versions just be careful doing this with certain assets like scripting assets or AI assets because your project might crash if you force some of those in this way. But usually it'll be fine with environment assets like this one. Now we can exit out of the Epic Games launcher and we should see the starter bundle folder inside of our content folder right here. And inside of this folder we can go to collection maps and open up map number one. Now this level should look pretty familiar if you've seen the showcase video. This is actually the exact level that I used for that video. Let's just rename this map to level 1 so that this can function as our first level in our project. And if you'll remember from our showcase video, this is our spawning area right next to the player start. You can just search for player start in the world outliner to bring you here. Let's actually move our player start back to the spawning area near that back wall there. In fact, I'll just put it right here in the corner and maybe rotate it a little more towards the center. Now we can add some enemies. I had an enemy here in the showcase video. We can turn them around 180 degree rotation. I had one enemy in this corner. Just turn him just over 90 degrees, maybe 110. One enemy down the hall hiding out in this corner. If we go back towards the spawning area, we can go up these stairs here. And I had one enemy facing this direction, 180 degree turn. There we go. So I had one enemy facing this direction over here in the corner. And then I had two enemies in the main control room here. One on this side and one over here. We can raise their difficulty by selecting both of them and changing their firing mode to automatic. That way they'll be a little harder once the player gets to this area. And also what we might want to do is change our last enemy on the downstairs to burst mode. That way he's a little bit harder than the other two enemies down here as well. So over here in our spawning area, you might notice that we don't currently spawn in as our player character. It's because we have to change our game mode in the world settings. Let's change the world settings to first person game mode. Then we can save all and test out our level. Now 
There we go. We're killing them. Ooh, the burst mode guy is actually really strong. So if you test out the level, you might notice some collision issues. Like if we play here, we can't really shoot the wall back behind this invisible blockage. That's really because the collision on the stairs is awful. Let's be sure to fix that. The stairs that I'm talking about are up here in the control room. These stairs right here. If we right click and browse to the asset, we can open it up and open up its simple collision. It looks normal, but if we go below the surface, we'll see that the collision extends way too far out of bounds. So it's blocking our bullets, even though it's way upstairs. So let's select this collision and delete it. Then we can save that. All right, with that done, we can recreate our main menu level with this level. The only thing we need to do is find it in our folders, go to collection maps, and we can duplicate this level. Let's just call this main menu and open that up. We'll have to save it as well. Let's just stay in this spawning area for this. We can delete our player start. And really the easiest way to recreate our current main menu levels to go to our maps folder. Open our main menu level, select our focus target and our camera. We can copy them and go back to our other level, our main menu map. And we can just paste them in. Looks like they're way over there. Let's get them into our spawning area just by dragging both of them at the same time. And we can move them into position. There we go. Let's change the world settings. Let's change our game mode from first person game mode to our main menu game mode. And we're just going to want to copy the level blueprint from our main menu level as well. At event begin play, we just make the main menu widget. So we can do that in our new level as well. Open up the main menu. Open up level blueprint and we can copy and paste. At this point, let's reorganize our level names. We can change the main menu level to main menu test. And we can change our first person example map to test map. And then we can change our main menu map to main menu level. Let's open up our blueprints just to double check them. When we open up our main menu, it's going to want to open our first person example map since that's what we typed in. Let's change that from first person example map to level one. And I think the other widgets should be fine since they just get the current level name and open that level. And when you hit the main menu button, now our main menu level is called main menu level. That should be the same for the game over widget as well. Perfect. Just to stay organized, let's move these new maps into our old maps folder. We can clean up our project a little bit later on. We're just trying to get the game finalized right now. And let's see what it looks like. So we can hover over our menu. We start the game and we're in the correct level. Nice. So lastly, we'll need some good music for our project. And that should be pretty easy to implement. Let's just go to our main menu level. Let's stay in our spawn area. And we can go to our downloads folder inside of our audio folder. And inside of this folder, as long as you've downloaded the assets from previous videos, you should have these two songs here, the Retro Gamer song and the Warhammer song. Let's be sure to right click on them and create some cues, just like we did in previous videos. And for both of these cues, the only thing we're going to want to do is to have the music looping. So let's plug in the outputs. Go ahead and save that. Open up the Warhammer, drag in looping, and plug that in. And in our main menu, we can just put our Retro Gamer music cue right here. Go to the Details panel. We actually won't have to change anything for our cue. But just in case you ever want to adjust any of these settings later on, you can go ahead and do so here in the details panel. Luckily, our project's pretty simple, so we won't need any audio management going on. Now let's open level one, save our main menu level, and inside of level one, we can go to our audio folder, downloads, and drag in the Warhammer music. To stay organized, I'm going to make a quick folder called test levels. 
and I'm going to put the first two maps that we ever made into this folder. That way we don't get confused with any of our new actual levels that we'll be using. And we can change the color of this folder just to match our levels. And let's test it out. Perfect. Our project looks and sounds great. But there's a couple of bugs and small improvements that we can make. The first is avoiding self damage when firing our weapon. You might have noticed that I dealt damage to myself a couple times while firing the weapon. Right now, sometimes when we fire our weapon, the projectile hits us and deals damage to us, even though we're the ones firing the bullet. Well, we can avoid self damage by ignoring the character who shot the projectile, also known as the owner. So let's open up our environmental folder and go to our master projectile and on event hit, First thing we can do is check to see if the other actor that's hit is equal to our owner. So let's right click and search for get owner and plug that right in. We can get an if off of the Boolean value that comes out. Let's zoom out and just move all of the scripting over a little bit. So with this setup, whenever our projectile hits anything, it'll check to see if it's the owner that we hit. If it is, let's just leave this execution line blank so that it doesn't do anything. Off the false path, we can do our normal functionality for the projectile. So that if it hits anything else, it'll do its normal functionality. And it's pretty easy to set up the owner. Whenever the projectile is spawned, we can set up the owner then. So let's minimize out of here, and we actually spawn the projectile from our master FPS character. We can scroll up and go to our fire single projectile function, and for the owner, we can just plug in ourself. So whoever fires this projectile will have itself as the owner, and no one can deal damage to themselves anymore with the projectile. Let's test that out. We can just start a new game and run forward and we're no longer dealing damage to ourselves when we're running and firing. And since we're adjusting the functionality of our projectile, we can stick with that. I don't know if you've noticed, but whenever we hop into a level and start firing our projectile, all of the decals have the same exact rotation on the wall. So it starts to look a little bit repetitive when we're shooting at a wall. It's pretty easy to change that. We can open up our projectile again, and when we spawn our decal, we can actually change the way that we do our rotation. Let's drag off of rotation and make a rotator. We're still going to want the same pitch and yaw from our make rot from X. And we can get that just by splitting the struct. Plug that right into pitch, plug that into yaw. But on our roll, we can get a random float in range. We'll have the minimum range be zero and we can have the maximum range be 180. That way it can rotate all the way around randomly. Let's bring this box down, compile and save, and let's test that out in the level. New game. And it looks like they are rotating, but it's a little easier to see if we use the semi-automatic bullets since their decals are smaller. There we go. It does look a lot better. And the last thing I want to change is when we go into the level, our enemies have like immaculate reflexes. They start firing as soon as we pop out into their field of view. We can give them just a little bit of a delay by fixing one thing. We probably just should have set it up this way in the behavior tree. We can wait first. Let's move all of this over. Now when our enemy sees us, they'll do a small wait, giving our player just a little bit of a leeway to fire at the enemy before they get shot at. It really helps because it gives the player a slight chance to react before the enemy does, and that makes the game a lot easier. Before, it was basically impossible. Now they don't have perfect reactions, and we can easily take this guy out. They still have fast reactions sometimes. Oh, this guy had really good reactions. All right, so it's not impossible anymore. It's just really hard. And since we're messing with the enemies a little bit, we do want them to stop firing when the player dies. That's set up in our master FPS character. So we can open up the master FPS character again, go to the event graph, and before they fire their weapon, 
we can check to see if the player character is alive. So let's get our player character. We can cast to our BP player character. Plug that right in here and get the is alive function. So we're going to check to see if the person firing is alive and if our player is alive. We can drag off of this boolean, get an and boolean, plug that in there, and plug this one into the branch. Now it's a little messy, but we can move things over. It's a little messy up here at the top, but when anyone fires their weapon, we're going to check to see if our player character is our player character class. If it is, we're going to see if the person firing their weapon is alive and if the player character is alive. And if they are, we'll do our normal firing mode event. And down here on the automatic mode, we should set this up a little differently off of the branch. Instead of just going back and doing the same thing over and over, we can actually get our fire weapon event and plug it in there and delete this reroute node right there. It's no longer necessary. Now, if we're firing our weapon in automatic mode, it'll do its normal firing stuff. And if we're still firing, instead of just rerouting all the way back here and going through the loop over and over, it's going to start all the way back at the top to make sure that the player is still alive. So let's test that out. We can run right upstairs to our two enemies in automatic firing mode. And they killed me really fast and then they immediately stopped firing because they knew I was dead. And that's really all the small improvements that I wanted to do to the project. At this point, our project is fully complete and it's working more smoothly than even the showcase video one. It has better AI, better decals, a more simple method of checking to see if the level's complete. I'm pretty proud of what we made. Now it's really up to you to make things better. That puts us in a great place to end the series. Thank you for following along. There were tons of tips and tricks in the series, so I'm glad you stuck around to hopefully learn a thing or two. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out against the YouTube algorithm. I'm Joe Von D, here to help you think like a game developer. Stay tuned for what's next to come on the channel.